thank you, Captain. Hello and hello again, and welcome to Living Strong, where I'm your host, a Prophet Johnson. You know what to do? Call that friend, that neighbor, and let them know. Tune in right now. This is a fast approaching moment in your life. For those things that have eluded you and have also excluded you have now about to become the benefits of your life. War of the mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Wherewith inside are there wars and battles and challenges and rumors. The debate is ongoing every day in life. And there's not an individual living that we can say, why is this or why is that? What is the answer? Come unto me, all you that labor and are the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Study to show thyself approved unto God. And in his law shall he meditate day and night. What does the Bible declare? All that labor and of a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Those that are weary. And we are living in a time now, folks. Ooh, Jesus. To where if y'all cannot see what's going on, it is amazing. Look at Israel. Look at what's happening over there. Look at what they have recently come out on television with and what I do not believe in, never have believed in, and never will believe in. On television, UFOs. They call them now unidentified uh, paranormal for some else uh, objects, you know. So what is this about the UFOs now <laughs> they are, that they are captive? Did you see this stuff? They are releasing it on television now about, you know, and bringing out the, the uh, Air Force people. And they're talking about seeing these objects in the air. No such thing. Everything is an IFO. Everything is identified, whether you know it or not. And I love it because Jesus is getting us lined up. He's getting us ready for that great day and that notable day of the Lord. And what is this about the job market, the economy? Bouncing back, openings everywhere, hiring here, hiring there, work needed here, work needed there. I told y'all, y'all better bring those Mexican, Guatemalans, Hondurans, Puerto Ricans, Elasticians, and all them obstetricians. You better bring them all in here. You don't need all the help you can get, America. But that's not God's plan. God's got another plan. He's gathering his children for the last and evil days. War of the minds, let's get started. Where do these wars come from? Where do these battles come from? Well, let's go back to the word of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, yeah, just like they profiled you, I'm profiling them. They profile you, I am profiling them. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 1, there, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The grace that is in Christ Jesus, okay? And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. I want you to be strong in the liberality, in the grace, in the circumstances of your life. 
knowing that I would never leave you nor forsake you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He came unto his own, but his own received them not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Blessed is the man whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. The peace that I give, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Once again, the Lord is saying, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good virtue and of a good report, if there be any praise, think on these things. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All of mine and thine are mine and all that thou hast given me, I have lost none, save the Lord, except one which is Yehuda, the son of Judah, and for this reason was he born. I come that you might, hallelujah, know that I am he which was and which is and which is to come. And all that come unto me, I will in no wise cast them out, for I am the first, the last, the bread of life. And once again, Blessed are the peacemaker, blessed are the pure in heart, and blessed are those, hallelujah, that seek the Lord while he may be found. Knock shall be opened, ask, it shall be given. Right now, I don't care what the dilemma is, hallelujah, the deliverer of fire is in the house and the deliverer of the dilemma is in your presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, he's setting forth precedence right now. You don't see it, you don't see it. You said, Prophet Johnson, there's so many wars, there's so many battles. Right now, I'm concerned about this, and I'm concerned about that in my body, my home, my situation, my job, my money, my relationship. Oh, and I, God, will say, cash your cares upon him for he careth for you. You will not be eliminated in the process. The problem is with many of you is your religion, <laughs> your custom, your traditions, your dogmas, your stigmas, your rituals, your family, your connections, you're also hooked up with that which is of an alternative life. Dealing with that that is not related, re related to reality. In other words, alternate mindset. What's alternating your mind, sir? What's alternating your mind, ma'am? What's changing it? What's causing you not to be normal? What is this little pill that I'm taking? What is this drink that I'm drinking? What is this smoke that I'm puffing? What is this crack that I'm cracking? What is this coke that I'm coking? What is this meth that I'm mething? What changed me from the normality of who I am? Who is this guy? Who is this man? What body are you laying with every night? Who's opening the door to those demons that's knocking the dishes off the counter? What's waking you up in the midnight hour? What's causing you to eat? What's causing you not to sleep? Who's worrying you? Why are you worried? Why did you let it or they worry you? Whose purpose are you fulfilling? What God do you serve? What 
what emotions is in balance? Why is your purpose out of order? Who do you belong to? What do you belong to? What tribe are you from? What occult are you with? Who have you agreed with? Why did you agree with them? Was it your security? Or was it their security? Was it their desire? Was it your desire? Did you agree with the weapons of Satan before you agreed with the power of God? Who brought you down? Who left you down? What did not educate you? Why did you not find yourself? Who lost you? What wilderness did you not come out of? Are we in the same wilderness? How is it that you can ask me all these questions and you don't even have to answer yourself? Shame on us. Verse number two, Second Timothy, chapter number two, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We don't want to go through nothing. Given to us on a platter. Lazy. Don't want to work. We want the government money. What's this going on with Mississippi? Abortion. What happened with 45? Supreme Court. Mississippi. Thank God that the lowest state in the world, in the universe of America, the most hateful racist, and also, back in the day, Negro, nigger-hanging state have acquired the hierarchy of the approval of heaven to agree not to kill the child. That you really, and they really don't care nothing about. What is this lost in transition that we seek among men? Why is it that God have allowed you to become the purpose and the agenda in which all of America really needs to know that yes, I hate abortion. You know, and we claim that we hate abortion, we love life, but when it comes to God, comes to me and being killed in the street because of the color of their skin, how hypocritical can you be beyond the hypocrites that you are? But yet God is allowing you to spearhead for the glory and the salvation of the children. For the time is short, and every child that needs to be born needs to be born right now. They say with well, Prophet Johnson, all this abortion stuff, and bring it on deep, baby! Well, what about this and what about that? Well, that father went and slept with his daughter, incest, she's pregnant. The uncle slept with the niece. She pregnant. The son slept with the mama. She pregnant. Now what do you do about that, Mr. Prophet Know-it-all? The girl is only 13, pregnant by her brother. She pregnant. What do you do 
about that, Mr. Prophet. Let the child be born. And let God be the judge. Hmm? Hmm? Is it not still life? Regardless of how it got here? As my papa's <laughs> Saranata said unto me, Fraulein, mit sprechen mit mir, ich merkst dit nur, wie geht es ihnen, kein Anschluss einer dieser Nummer, wo ist der Anklang drüben bitte? <laughs> what time is it? This number is no longer in service. Where is your fitting room? Hubbin ye Klein Gale, do you have any small change, boy? God only used that, him, your papa, as the vehicle that got you here through your mama, your mama. So you was only the excrements, the off giving, the bowel movement, the sex capade of the vehicle that desired great lust and sexual pleasure to get you here. So now through the ancestralness of life, are we born through the seed of the promise of evil, only to serve as a witness to life itself. Let the child live. Let God be the judge. Captain, let's go hot and heavy since they done mess with me. Since they don't mess with me, we, we going hot and heavy now. Here it is right here. Let's show this here. Let's show this stuff. Second Samuel chapter number 13, verse number 1. And just a lost uh, war of the mind. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse number 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Absalom, the son of David, that's his sister. Okay, they come from a different mama but by the same daddy. Pow, wow, here we go. Here it goes. Whose name was Tamar? Tamar was bad to the bone. That girl, let me tell y'all something. Y'all little makeup, little artists on TV and everything else. And what's going on with this um, LGBTQ thing and all this other stuff. And right now God spoke to me. He said, son, there are coming a time in the future in which there will be a total transformation. In which you will not be able to tell a male completely from a female, nor a female completely from a male. This will be the pinnacle of the swinging of the pendulum of Sodom and Gomorrah in the last days in which I shall judge mankind. He said, look at your television. He said, there are men who are totally transformed to that which is of the sexual order of a woman and cannot be discernible by human nature, nor even by the gifts of the Spirit except they walk with me. He said, likewise females shall become men. And he said, this shall become near in the future within the next five years and America will be a transformation of that which will lead from 10% to 20% and male and female will be judged by television. They will be judged in the streets and they will no longer know them Themselves, and the nation will become lazy and inept and it will die within itself from that which it have procure, procured and procreated from that which deviated from the plan and the will of God in man's life. I must read, I must hurry. And Amnon was vexed. He looked at his sister and he said, wow, she's bad. Look at that smooth black silky hair, curly. Look at those prosopaton brown eyes. Look at that mediocre medium lip and look at the nose that come down with the African queendom ship upon her. Oh yeah, 
past. You must not know about me. You must not know about me. Don't you ever get to miss it, miss the thinking. You're irresistible. I can have another here by tomorrow. And, and if you will be sorrow, thank God he didn't come yesterday. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He's vexed in his flesh. Let me tell you something. He's confused. He's hurt. He has an alternative mind. He is having a battle, a war of the mind for his sister, for she was a virgin. Oh, my God. Who sugar sweet. How neat was the plum for his thumb. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. And, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. In other words, hard at the bottom, thinking hard at his hop, and it's hard everywhere. But Amnon had a friend, old two-timing, low-down, sneaky head, dirty brother of the brother-in-law is sitting there watching the brother-in-law snake out for the sister and he got an old sneaky friend on the side whose name was Jonadab the son of Shemaiah David's brother. Did you hear it? Little sneaky low down stinking snake in the grass dirty brother-in-law never left the family because he was a dog from the beginning in a hussy. And Jonadab was very subtile man, sneaky like a snake, just like the serpent in the Garden of Eden, slick with all, sitting back working a dirty, low-down, conniving friend, saying to his brother-in-law, do you want to, his cousin, do you want to hit that stuff? Here it is. And he said unto him, why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? This joker want to smooch us so bad, Captain, he want to get that stuff until he can't even eat. Done lost weight, stomach done slunk in, sunk in. Every bit of his head done went to his pecker. Little old skinny, bony mug, ready to try to smooch some. Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love tomorrow. You see the confusion of the mind. Love, misrepresented word. I love you. No, what I do is I want you for now. I want you in the bed. You are my baby. You are my lover. I've been waiting on you all this time and I got a snake that's going to set me up because I can't eat. I'm hot with you. I'm on fire with you because I have a war in my mind and his brother and my brother Absalom's sister that's who I'm in love with. My brother's sister. You got to remember that the genealogy was pure back then. It wasn't broken back then. You see what happened is that God had a pure lion age, but then the lion age was broken with Noah and everything else after that flood came in. And then as it went on down the line, it got mixed up. Black folks with white folks and Mexican folks with Chinese folks and Indian folks with Hispanic folks. And, and now we got black and white and Mexican and Chinese mixed together in the bloodline. And the bloodline is all confused now. That's why when you go and you put a father with a daughter, the bloodline don't know where to go because they go, got to go somewhere that's not the same of where it come from. So the bloodline will look for an opposite match of the DNA on which it come from. So that bloodline will search through a white, say it's all right with the black and white. It's all right with the Mexican and Chinese. But now, then the bloodline go. It's all right with the black and the black and the white and the white, Chinese, Chinese, and Mexican, Mexican, Hispanic, Hispanic. Then the bloodline will go. And then the bloodline see, wait a minute. Here's a father and a daughter. Here's an auntie and an uncle. Here's a brother and a sister. And the bloodline get mixed up. And that seed go in. And that seed is looking, where do I need to go? And the seed said, well, you're not supposed to go there because that's who you are. You go connect with your own DNA and the substance of who you are. And then the bloodline goes in and says, I have no other choice. This is all he gave me through the spirit of the heifer and the spirit of the bastard. It penetrates the head. Now the bloodline become confused. That child become contaminated. The whole family become cursed. Why? Because the bloodline now has 
has been broken by the DNA of separation and the truth of who God allowed it to be in life like never before. It's the same thing with a man. If a man, a woman can take a birth control pill, the birth control pill know what bloodstream to go to, what egg to find, how to eliminate the egg. But let a man take a birth control pill. The birth control pill is going to get inside the man, start looking around, saying, I don't know where to go. The birth control pill is then going to go down to the man pecker, look at the man pecker, and say there's a wee-wee here, not a vagina. Then the blood control pill going to go to the man balls and look at his little two little testicles and his little old bit of raisins sitting there and say, do I dry them up? They already dried up enough as it is. So what do the pill going to do? Go to the back of the man butt and find the exit and get out and go through the toilet and say, thank God. Hell, I'm glad I got out of that. Thank God Prophet Johnson said that. Captain, you give me a minute, I'll finish here because I'm rushing. And Jonadab said unto him, verse number five, lay down, thank you, Captain, on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to thee, uh, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it in her hand. In other words, bring my sister over here to feed me whom I'm in love with so that when she come and, and feed me and tell my daddy a lie, tell him I'm sick. Yeah, you're sick from love. You're sick in your head and you're sick in your pecker. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. <laughs> boy, boy, I tell you what, boy. Captain, Captain wouldn't rush at me, y'all. Boy, this mug rushing me, rushing me, rushing me. Let me tell you, he made it. Some of y'all make your own self sick with love. That's what the problem is right now. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You love it because of the flesh and you're sick with it. Go ahead on, get that little old smooch. Captain rushing me, let me hurry. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let tomorrow my sister come, talking to his daddy, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Oh, yeah. In other words, I'm going to watch her. And as she's making the cake, I'm going to be watching her booty. That's what I'm going to be doing and getting my peck on hard so I can steal a legalized, illegal smooch. Tell him Prophet Johnson said that on Living Strong. Okay, then David sent home to Tamar, Captain, hold on, saying, go now to thy brother's Amnon and dress him, him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes, and she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. He wasn't hungry anyway. He was sexually whatever. And Amnon said, have all the men out for me. Get all of them out. I don't want to see them, me getting this stuff. And they went out every man. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring me the meat into the chamber and that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes when, which she had made and brought them unto the chamber of Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them to, unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. And she answered and said, no, my brother, don't force me to do this. No such thing should be done in Israel. This is a folly. And if, and if I go, shall you, and if I do this, you're going to cause shame. And as for me, she said, I would be the fool in Israel. They gonna make, you're going to make me look a fool. Now I pray, speak to the king. Go ask your daddy, for he will not hold me back. Go ask David. David will give me unto you. The bloodline is pure. Howbeit he would not hearken unto a voice. Captain, I'm close. I got five seconds. Being stronger than her. You better believe it, man. He forced himself upon her. He lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So that he hated her with a hatred. Wherewith he hated her with great his hate was greater than the love that he had loved her with. And Amnon said to her, go, be gone. And she said, there is no cause this evil in sending me away after you done tore up my hind end. But he wouldn't listen to her and said, get out of the house and call his old dirty brother-in-law and said, Throw her out. I don't want her no more. And then after that, she had a garment. She took up. 
the favorite clothes, her sundress of many colors, real beautiful, went out and cried and tore it up and brought it to the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was upon her like a type of Joseph in the spirit. And he laid hand on her and she went away crying. He humiliated her. He took her body. He took her virginity. He took her life. He took everything because he had a war in his mind and that's what's wrong today is war in the mind of America, of the church of the people, of the individual and the war in the mind of Captain that's gonna cut me off and all I can say to y'all is have a good weekend war of the mind bye I'm wise